All right, so as it gets closer to Halloween, I thought it might be fun to go ahead and make a video about how to model a jack-o'-lantern. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here is kind of the finished result of what we're going for. I uh, don't know if I'll get to the lighting and materials, but in terms of the overall shape, this is what uh, we can expect, or hopefully we'll get somewhere close. All right, so starting with um, the basics here, I do wanna point out that I do have some of this already done. Okay, so I already kind of pen tooled out um, part of the mouth, um, some of the nose and eye. That way uh, we can save a little bit of time here. Now, I also want to point out that there's some weird things about the pen tool in 2023, which I'll show here in a second. So um, let's get a, go ahead and get started creating our material for reference. Um, I'm going to come in here and in my material, load my image okay, that I just found online. You can Google, you know, template jack o lantern template, and you should be able to find something. I'm going to create a plane where I reduce the number of segments, change its orientation, and then I can go and apply this plane. Now, if it still looks a little pixelated, we can fix that in the viewport options here. Switch the texture preview size to no scaling, and look how much more clean and crisp that is. And then what I did is I moved it back just a bit, so you can see the splines. You can kind of see them already there added the protection tag as well under rigging. That way we don't accidentally move it. One last thing with this material to make it a little bit easier to see the splines um, as you're creating them, or in this case, as I already have mine, is to go into the alpha property, turn this on, load in a color, and then you can adjust the transparency here. Notice how much easier it is to see the splines. So this is kind of what I did before diving into the pen tooling. Now, when it comes to the pen tooling, I do wanna to switch to something like a front view here. And um, normally what I would do is just kind of pen tool out the basic shape without even worry about, you know, kind of adjusting the handles, the points, whatever. What I found though, is that adjusting the handles is now completely different in um, 2023. So before what I would do is if I have a point with soft interpolation is here, you used to be able to hold shift and break a handle. Okay, hold shift, break a handle. That doesn't seem to be the case. I'm gonna look into this more. If anybody uh, has found a solution to this other than the one I'm about to show, please feel free to mention it in the comments. But this used to work on previous versions. Now what you have to do is go back into the spline pen and now you can hold shift and break a handle. And then from there, it's kind of constantly broke. You don't need to hold shift anymore. So uh, really different, not a fan of it at this moment. Um, obviously it'll just take some time to get used to, but uh, if, there's, if anybody knows how to kind of work with splines the way um, you could previously, I would be very interested in that. So um, let's kind of get this. I can get rid of the plane as well. And here is um, our mouth. Now, there are a couple of different ways you can create kind of both sets of this. What I will do is just connect and delete both of these. And you'll notice that didn't close up or that opened up now. Um, and we have a few parts that are also open. So that's because of this close spline option, which we'll come back to here in a second. Um, what I can do is now just duplicate this by holding shift and rotating it 180 degrees. And that looks pretty good, right? Um, if I hit close spline, you'll see it fixes the eye, presents some other problems. Um, what I want to do now is go into point mode and delete these two points on the nose these two points on the mouth. And we'll see why here in a second. This now allows me to do a connect objects plus delete. And once again, if I just hit close spline, you can see the eyes look pretty good, but it's the mouth and nose that we still need to work with. So what I can do is select two points and then choose join segment. Okay, and I'm actually gonna do it at this bottom one since this has some handles involved. Join segment. And so now when I hit close spline, it closes that up correctly. So we want to leave one section open. I'm going to do the same thing here with the, the nose. Collect, select two points. Choose join segment. That way I have just this one part open. Do close spline now. It does look like it struggled with the handles here. So I could always come in back to my pen tool. Hold shift if I want to break it and try and kind of fix this. Um, I don't really care too much if it's symmetric, all things 
considered. But yeah, there we there we go in terms of um, our mouth, eyes, and nose shape. What I will do is put this into an extrude. Okay. And maybe give this just a little bit more offset. But for now, that should be good. So that is our eyes, nose, and mouth. Next, on to the pumpkin. I'm going to start with a sphere. I'm going to scale this thing up quite a bit. I really want the eyes, nose, and mouth to be able to kind of poke through all the way. So I can use that. Maybe make this just a bit bigger. So something like that. Should it work just fine. In the sphere settings, I will set these segments to 18. Really, any multiple of two should work. I'm keeping this quite low, though, because I will eventually put this in a subdivision surface. I can make this editable. And if you pull up an image of a pumpkin, you will see that uh, the top and bottom are kind of flattened out a little bit. So I can select both of those points, go to my move tool, switch to soft selection down here and just toggle that on. I want to adjust the radius so that it kind of extends to, yeah, you know, a couple more rows here. I can then just scale this down and notice how it's flattening out the tops a little bit. So something like that looks pretty good to me. Now what I'm going to do is add a loop path cut, maybe something around here. This will eventually be for kind of the, the stock, I guess. Um, I really don't need to do it on the bottom. Um, but what I do want to do uh, on the bottom part of this pumpkin is delete these polygons. I can also turn off soft, soft selection because I'm done with it. Delete these top polygons. And the reason why is that will help me do uh, a loop selection a bit quicker without it screwing things up. So you can either go select loop selection or I just hit V to pull up this kind of multi menu thing. Choose select then loop selection. Make sure I'm in edge mode. And because we went with an even number, we should be able to select every other one. Except if I screwed up somewhere. Did I screw up somewhere? Huh. Maybe I didn't set it to 18. That should have worked. Unless. Try this one more time. There we go. So one, two, three. Trying to go quickly. Might have gone too fast there. There we go. So great. That's looking good. Um, I'm now going to hold Alt or Option to put this in a subdivision surface. I'll name this pumpkin. Okay. Go back to the polygon object and switch to my scale tool so I can scale these parts out. And this is going to give us kind of the um, parts that are a little bit higher, the, I don't know, ridged areas. Um, but you'll notice it's round, but not quite as um, uh, sphere like, circle like as it could be. And that's because, you know, really it's very pointed here. And what we can do to help with that is bevel. So I'm going to bevel out these edges. And as we do that, we'll see that the roundness becomes more and more like a circle or a sphere. So that's looking pretty good. And of course, you could take this further by sculpting it. But honestly, for my purposes, that will work just fine. Um, I may need to adjust the mouth extrude a little bit because of that. That looks good. Go ahead and close up the bottom here. I'm going to go to Edge. I'm going to hit V again and choose Loop Select. I can select just those bottom edges. I don't want to close polygon hole quite yet because um, these edges do have a lot of um, height to them. So I'll switch to my scale tool, hold control. And that will allow me to extrude these out. So I'm going to extrude these out. And then I'll scale down on the Y to flatten them out. Okay. And then close polygon hole. That will work just fine. And since that's the bottom, I don't care. It's not 100% perfect. Up here, we need to create the stock. So back to loop selection, select that top part. And I'm going to do that whole edge selection thing by holding control. I can just move this up a little bit, scale it down, maybe rotate it a touch, move it, hold control to duplicate these edges again, rotate it, scale it down. Maybe we'll do one more. Okay, honestly, it can be whatever, whatever shape you want. But I think that looks pretty good. I'll close the polygon hole up here. And if that looks a little bit strange, 
what you can do is really the same process we did before where um, we switch to our scale tool, scaled it in, and then close the polygon hole. And that should kind of look good enough. Now we can add maybe a little bit of a ridge to separate the stock with the, the rest of the pumpkin or from the, you know, kind of the, what I would call the handle from the, the base, the, the brown from the orange part. And I think this part's a, well, actually looks like it might be easier to do without the subdivision surface on. I'm gonna go into loop path cut. Maybe like right around here, I'm gonna add three loops pretty close together. Okay, not gonna really look like anything's changed if I turn my subdivision surface back on. But if I go back to loop selection, and there's a lot of that, I'm gonna select the middle one. So if I can try and find that, I think that's it. Nope, so find the middle one. I'll go subdivision service back on if I need to, and then I can bring that down. And that's gonna give me just that little indent, that little separation. That could also be kind of where we cut the, the top off here to kind of separate it and you know open it up. Though really, I suspect that would be a bit further out, but you could repeat that process um, if you did want to um, add that. But you can see what that looks like. Really nice separation there for the different materials. Okay, now in terms of the face, pretty straightforward. I've experimented with a few different ways. Um, my favorite way is actually the bool object, okay? The volume builder, while possible, can be a little bit problematic. Um, I've tried a whole bunch of different ways and I think the bool just works best. So I can create a bool, put both of these objects inside there. Let's call this face. And there you have it, okay? Now what you may notice right now is a couple of things. One, our eyes, are way too thick and we can fix that here shortly. But we do have a few places where kind of the fong shading is breaking. Now, some of that's gonna be unavoidable, but one thing we can do to try and help is make this segments from our extrude be a little bit more evenly spaced. So I can select the face, go into the nose and mouth and switch the intermediate point type to say natural. Notice how those are just a bit more evenly spaced. If I really wanted evenly spaced, I could use uniform, um, but that, you know, in this case works, but makes things not, maybe not quite as round as I would like. That's where natural can come into um, be helpful. Though I could always adjust the number from one or the other. Although don't crash, don't crash, don't go too high. All right, let's turn that down to maybe like 12. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. If I turn off my shading and see, yeah, it really didn't make a huge difference there. Um, we could try turning up the subdivisions on our subdivision surface here. That could help with that shading as well. And this is kind of our last chance to do this. So if you do want to clean that stuff up, um, we can go a bit higher. We are going to end up with more polygons. So just kind of need to balance things out. Now, once you're all done and happy with this, uh, I would definitely kind of duplicate it and hide the original. So that way, if you need it, you have it. And in fact, I like to put things like that in a null called OG and hide it. That way, if I ever want to come back to it, I can. All right, now what we're gonna do is make this editable. Okay, so we have two pieces. We have our pumpkin, and we also have kind of the interior part of the face, which we can actually get rid of. So we have this empty shell, which maybe this is what you want. Okay, but if you wanna add some thickness, we can go into our in here, select all. In order to add some thickness here, we can use extrude, but we don't wanna just do a regular extrude, okay? Um, it's already turned on on mine. So a regular extrude is gonna give us some strange results, okay? Maybe that's what you want, maybe, maybe probably not though. Instead, we wanna turn on create caps, and that will give us some thickness. And how much, how little thickness, one is up to us. You have to be a little bit careful because we can get some weirdness up in the handle. Honestly, before we do that, we probably should have like simplified that a little bit. I think we'll be just fine if we just add a little bit. So something like that, perfect. And that is pretty much it. Okay, so we have our pumpkin. You might be able to bevel these edges. If you're using Redshift or perhaps Octane, you might be able to get away with a rounded corners material to help smooth those out a little. Um, yeah, and maybe just even kind of optimize things a little bit. What won't work 
is putting this in a um, remesh. So don't even bother. Weird things happen. Okay. Just, yeah, not worth the time, uh, as you'll see here in a second. Now, this may take a little bit longer because I did up the um, subdivision surface, um, you know, a bit more than I did previously. And that is how I ended up with this off um, this pumpkin. Now, in terms of the uh, lighting and materials here, so I just have a dome light with an HDRI in here, and I'll just turn off everything else that provided. Kind of the the base illumination here i did add an area light that i tinted orange for the inside and i do have a redshift environment set up to give me this little bit of um volumetricness okay now the materials are nothing special but i can go over them really quickly um just an orange material where i loaded a max on noise into the bump map I did have to increase the height scale a little bit, as well as the overall scale um, of the noise itself. And in terms of the, the base material, just an orange color, pretty high roughness. And honestly, I'd probably turn down the reflectivity, you know, a bit more. For the stock, the handle, whatever you want to call it, something very similar. Okay. Max on noise for the color, you know, all procedural here. If I wanted this to be more realistic, I'd probably look for some um, different textures. but uh, for the noise, or I'm sorry, for the bump, another noise I made smaller into a bump map. I did increase the strength quite a bit on that. And there you have it. Here is the finished result. So hopefully you liked that video. Um, if there's anything else you want to see, please let me know uh, and take care.